how it's going to go. Are we rolling now? <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, this is the long-awaited video we talked about, and um, we're just going to go ahead and do it. We keep putting it off. Uh, it's unscripted. It's unrehearsed. Whatever it is, it is. Um, here is the project that we're going to be making. Uh, it's a tool chest. I made this down at Roy Underhill's place. Um, and uh, when I made it, I didn't glue it together. It's uh, dovetail and mortise and tenon, so I was able to just hammer it together without glue. And the plan was that I would take it apart and stick it in my luggage so we could fly it back to Allentown. Uh, it didn't turn out that way, actually. I wound up when I was down there the final day. I glued the sides up and the bottom. And uh, Roy actually helped me with this. And uh, after it was all done, he said, that's uh, great, Ken. Now, how are you going to get this back to Allentown? So I told him we'd figure out a way, and Jonine and I went to Chapel Hill the following day, and I found a FedEx office. And we were able to ship this box home rather inexpensively. And the rest of the parts, the lid and everything, um, we did take apart and take home. Um, so here it is. It is a, um, it's a tool chest, and uh, it's about half the size of a full-size tool chest. And it's, it's exactly how... Um, most woodworkers stored their tools 200 years ago. Um, most guys uh, worked out of their homes. They didn't have shops. They worked in their living areas in their homes and they needed to be able to put their tools away when they were done so that the house could be used for typical household activities. And you didn't want to have the kids grabbing your razor sharp tools and stuff like that. So they made these boxes. This is very similar to uh, your typical tool chest. Um, it's made of native, native materials. This is um, poplar. It's a North American species. There are no uh, poplar forests in Europe. So uh, if you find something made of poplar, it's pro and it's an antique, it's probably made in America. It's a dovetail construction, as you can see. Um, and it will have a lid, which I'm working on here, uh, that will go together. Uh, all handmade, by the way, no power tools whatsoever in making this, and I'm going to kind of keep it that way just for the, the fun of it. Uh, we're going to be making trays that go into the top, uh, shallow trays, just like a modern tool chest typically would have. It's going to have handles that go on the side, hinges. Uh, it's also going to have a lock that's mortised in on the front. So this is exactly how uh, tool chests were made. Uh, they made all different kinds, but they're surprisingly similar and the features that they, ha they all seem to have in common. Um, so we have a ways to go on it. I did, when I, get, when I got it home, uh, glue up this apron that you see along the front here. And uh, just to show you something kind of interesting, uh, you'll see this molded edge down here. Uh, that's not molding that was tacked on. That's milled onto this piece here. It's all a solid piece which is a great way to go. I did this with a, with a molding plane. That's about as close as you can get. It's going to go out of focus mm. better there. But if you look on the corner, you'll see that this is a dovetail for strength. Makes a nice solid corner. But up here, so that the profile can continue around the corner, it's mitered. So you have a miter joint up here, an overlapping or interlocking dovetail down here. Very tricky to make because they have to fit perfectly or you're going to wind up with a gap either in your dovetail or in your miter. So that was the trickiest part of this of this whole chest was getting all those corners just right. And uh, I'm happy it turned out. Um, but that was real tricky to do. And if these lengths of the boards are not exactly right, you wind up with a gap somewhere in your in your case. So um, that's been done. I've spared you the stress of that part. But I promise I will sh I spare you no other stressful situations here. We're going to do as much of this on camera as we can. The next step is going to be finishing the glue up of this uh, top here. Um, and we're going to talk about the glue that I'm using for that. And then following that we'll shoot another episode where we talk about the hardware. I'm in the process now of finding the hardware for this, but we'll eventually get that uh, in the house, and when we do, we'll do a, a show just on that. So I think that's everything. Uh, again, this is unrehearsed, 
And uh, this is the end of this program. Uh, so we can cue the stupid music right now. And uh, I'll pretend that I'm going back to work. Well, yeah, there's the music now. I can hear it now. Here's the music. Okay. Uh,